In this project, we try to apply reinforcement learning to solving traveling salesman problem, or TSP. The traveling salesman problem describes a salesman who must travel between several customers. The order in which he does so is something he does not care about, as long as he visits all customers during his trip and finishes where he was at first. Each customer is connected to other close by customers or nodes by like road or railway. Each of those links between the customers has one weight attached, which is the cost between the two customers. The cost describes how difficult it is to traverse this edge on the graph, and may be given, for example, by the cost of transportation, or perhaps by the length of the edge or time required to complete the traversal, etc., etc. The salesman wants to keep both the travel costs as well as the distances he travels as low as possible. In short, we consider a problem in which a salesman is responsible for visiting all the customers in just one trip. When all the customers have been visited, it returns to the depot, and the problem ends. All we need to do is to minimize the total road length while visiting all the customers. In general, the traveling salesman problem is hard to solve. If there is a way to break this problem into smaller component problems, the components will be at least as complex as the original one. This is what computer scientists call NP-hard problems. Many people have studied this problem. The easiest or maybe the most expensive solution is to simply try all possibilities. The problem with this is that for n customers, you have n minus one factorial possibilities. This means that for only ten customers, there are over one hundred eighty thousand combinations to try. Now let's take a close look at the settings and the background. VRP is known to be a difficult problem because of its complex computation. Even if many exact and heuristic algorithms have been proposed, it's still a challenging task to provide fast and reliable solutions. Today, the development of neural networks and reinforcement learning makes it possible to solve these problems. In our project, we use reinforcement learning and show how to apply it to solve TSP problems. Reinforcement learning is a learning strategy to solve the problems of agents in the process when interacting with the environment, as to achieve specific goals and maximize some notion of cumulative reward. Therefore, reinforcement learning performs well on the problem of sampling from a given distribution. It means that we don't need to train every new instance. The trained model will also work well, and we can solve the problem very quickly. We also consider the Markov decision process formulation of the problem, and the optimal solution can be viewed as a sequence of decisions. This allows us to use reinforcement learning to produce near optimal solutions by increasing the probability of decoding desirable sequences. Bello proposed a framework by using a pointer network to decode the solution. However, this framework presumes the system is static over the time. To solve the TSP problem, we use recurrent neural network decoder and a tension mechanism to process both static and dynamic elements of the system. We would like to take a short review of a relative existing works before introducing our model. First is sequence-to-sequence -sequence models. In general sequence-to-sequence -sequence models, the input sequence shows once in the encoder, and the output sequence is generated on the sequence vector. For example, the last hidden states of the encoder are NN. In this model, there is another attention mechanism which participates the whole encoder RNN states. We also use a special attention structure to parameterize the policy. The second is neural combination optimization. The first neural optimization attempt was pointer network, which came out from sequence-to-sequence -sequence model and proposed by Venus. The pointer network model can be used in combination optimization problems because it's invariant to the length of encoded sequence, where the length of output sequence is determined by 
the source sequence. Our method is more close to balance. This solves the problem by neural combination optimization, with, which uses reinforcement learning to optimize the policy model. The architecture is quite effective in TSP and knapsack problems. Let's first look at the framework of our model. We assume that the node locations are randomly generated from a fixed distribution. Specifically, the customers and the depot locations are randomly generated in the unit, unit square. Then we fit the customers and depot as a graph to a convolutional layer for embedding. And we assume that the vehicle is located at the depot at time zero. So the first input to the decoder is an embedding of the depot location. At each decoding step, the vehicle chooses from among the customer nodes or the depot to visit in the next step. Once a sequence of the nodes to be visited is sampled, we compute the total vehicle distance and use its negative value as a reward signal. Now let's look at the technique details. We will introduce components of our model step by step. First of all, we need to generate a lot of data to train our model. As we said before, we assume that the known locations are randomly generated from 0 to 1, which means the coordinates of customers and depot are randomly generated in the unit square. Our proposed network contains three main components, embedding, decoder, and attention mechanism. The attention mechanism contains an actor network that predicts a probability distribution over the next action at any given decision step, and a critic network that estimates a reward for any problem instance from a given state. So, after finishing generating data, we fit the position data as a graph to a convolutional layer for embedding. The reason why we choose convolutional layer to encode not RNN is that in this problem, there is no meaningful order in the input set. RNN is necessary only when the inputs convey sequential information. For example, in next translation, the combination of words and their related position must be captured, so the translation will be accurate. However, in TSP, the inputs are the set of unordered customer locations, and their order is not meaningful. Any random combination contains the same information as the original input. Therefore, we use convolutional layer to encode structure graph input, and it avoids a lot of computation coming with RNN. We use the attention network in both actor and critic network. The attention network contains a one-dimension convolutional network which we used to detect features in the whole embedding inputs and a fully connected layer to detect the relations between each node in each state. Each state is the output of last state of LSTM, whose inputs are also the embedding inputs. The results after convolutional layer and the fully connected layer will aid it together and pass through an activated function 10H to get the unmasked logit. The real logit will gain by multiplying the mask. This represents which nodes we have gone through and the privilege of nodes to visit next. For the actor network, the final output is the probability and log probability of each node being chosen as next destination. After the input data went through the attention layer, we use a log softmax layer to transform the logic to log probability and then to probability distribution. We then choose which nodes to visit next based on the probabilities. The loss of the actor network is MSE of logic and masks for each batch, and the optimizer is Adam. For the critic network, embedding inputs and edge state were given to a three-layer attention. The input of the second attention layer is the embedding inputs multiply the probability of a node, which is a logic, by the way, from the first attention layer of the soft max. The embedding inputs are the main idea of attention because it keeps giving information from previous layer without passing through the current attention layer, 
whose result, which is probability, works as a weight for each element in the embedding input. So, in the third attention layer, the embedding input can be regarded as voted by three weights. One, probability from second attention layer, probability from the third attention layer, and one. The output of the critic network will also go through two fully connected layers with one ReLU to get the real probability. The loss of the critic network is MSE of logic and mask V, and the optimizer is Adam, which is the same as the actor network. While training the model, we use stochastic decoder to obtain the IDX and the temp. The IDX represents where the agent is currently for every batch. So IDX is a vector with a size of batch number. Initially, it's n minus 1 for every data. It means that we start from n node every time. Hence, the action is initially recording the position of n node and updated every time. Here is the method we obtain these two vectors. The initial state of decoder is set to be all zero. And thus, we, we obtain a new state with initial state and the embedding input for decoder. And the probability we obtain from the actor network will be compared with a randomly graduated matrix in the same size. Then we choose a larger one. In this step, we can prevent the policy stuck in a local minima during optimization. After being multiplied with a sequential array, it plus itself with a weight to get temp, which is a privilege is now being chosen. If the temp of 10 has a sum bigger than 10,000, it means it's no, not suitable for representing the privilege. We, re, we will replace that data by a new temp and IDX. After updating the math with IDX, we update the decoder input for next batch to the positions of the IDX, as well as the log probability for nodes in IDX. We update, we update reward for actor network by the action it gives, and we update the mask in critic network by the output, prob output probability it gives. For testing our model, we use Grady decoder, which choose a maximum probability given by the decoder to get our average reward and the reward standard deviation, as well as the time it takes for the model to get the policy. We apply gradient clips in optimizer, which clips the air 2 norm of gradient greater than 2 to avoid gradient exploding. Hello. This is the uh, last part of our presentation. Uh, we're going to talk about our RL solution uh, versus uh, a traditional solution on VIP problems. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, compatibility and then calculation power. Uh, we think uh, traditional ones is actually uh, much harder to calculate because we have to we have to um, do like a crazy uh, distant matrix calculation and then we have to do it every time the 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 element get changed. So so I think this part is much better when uh when we apply to uh when we use our RL based solution. And then I know at the beginning of the RL we have to set up a lot of parameters, uh how we train them, uh what what is the uh what is the mask value or kind of stuff that but uh, after we train our model we can reuse it at many different uh, places and then different uh, situations i think at that point of view actually uh, ril is much better and uh and then the for the for the scalability is uh is 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 much more friendly on the ril side as well uh because uh, we had a we had a uh analysis on that uh, the, the left side is uh, uh, the size of uh, our problem, and then the right side is the uh, number of the customers. And as we can see from the from the picture, the the growth is kind of linear. So I think the for scalability, I think RL solution is much more friendly than the traditional ones. And then now we're gonna talk about the future of RL based solution. And then um, we we think uh, RL one is you know the key factor for uh, traditional side is. They, they ain't got enough flexibility. You know, every time you change it, because there's much, much more uh, dynamic things happen in the in the real world. So I think it's very hard for a traditional solution to make it work. So I think 
RA will have a much brighter future on he, on this. And then it's not just that, uh, from non-tech point of view, I think just for whole RL community, community, you can get a lot of help from online. You can get a, you can find a nice paper online and then all, all kind of lecture online, I think. And also those, uh, those packages, those TensorFlows can help you to build, build your project much easier than the traditional way. And, uh, I think that helps a lot. And in the end, we think, um, RL just not just, for, it's not just for, uh, our problem, it's not just for VRP problems, it's, for, it's sort of for all kind of like optimization problem, the scheduling problem. I think I think RL-based method just had a huge potential extend their future and then solve real world problem. I think this is it. Thank you very much.